last time we discussed what a uh, good building is and we talked about what we were talking about what were the yes ma'am basic functional requirements of a building meaning what functions should a building serve so that it is you know good built uh, so it should be structurally strong it should have sufficient stiffness so that it um, deterioration does not reduce the efficiency of the structure so its structure should be strong strong enough so that it is uh, enough to be able to bear uh, some damage to itself you know if there are a few cracks some dampness it should still be able to stand uh, stably then from performance point of view the building should be well planned to give maximum comfort and convenience to the occupants of the building so what are the requirements or requisites of design and construction uh comfort and convenience is one so uh, it's one of the basic requirements we uh, create buildings so that we are safe and protected um, from the environment and from the outside external disturbances so basically we buildings should be comfortable and the, they should have proper spatial design for us to be convenient and comfort comes from uh, thermal comfort we should be protected from the climate changes harsh extreme with uh, uh, climate changes we should be protected uh, you know we should be comfortable as in there should be enough air ventilation there should be enough daylight during the time and uh, the people occupying that building should be able to live and work in a healthy uh, environment yes. and then other than that we can group uh, or maybe combine or you know uh, place similar functions together like a kitchen can be close to the pantry a uh, master bedroom and master toilet should be uh, clubbed together uh, so grouping of rooms should be done to ensure better circulation and optimum utilization so for example if you know when you enter the house you, you enter through the kitchen and then the pantry is on the very end corner so that won't work because you know you'll be first of all you'll be disturbed and nobody should enter through the kitchen first and then you'll be running back and forth from the kitchen to the pantry if you need any so uh, planning should be done so that it makes sense and uh, it's comfortable then uh, dimensional stability we discussed this in the last class a building uh, has to go through a lot of loads and takes a lot of burden um uh, for like the weight of the building itself load of the building itself load of the occupants the furniture and everything and uh, <clears throat> it should be designed keeping those loads in mind so that it doesn't buckle or uh, uh collapse under the weight and uh, shrinkages and expansion should be taken care of and uh, wind factor and uh, everything should be considered the whole context should be considered with, um, to design the structure of the building then durability so durability is obviously the time period of during which the building is usable uh, that's durability of a building meaning uh, from the moment it's built until the moment it remains stable and functional enough to provide the comfort and convenience and safety safety to the occupants that's the durability you know agar ek building khadi hui hai jo bilkul jarjar avastha mein hai and it's about to collapse 
उस बिल्डिंग को हम लोग सेफ नहीं मानेंगे सो so, उसकी ड्यूरेबिलिटी एंडेड जब वो उतनी खराब कंडीशन में आई सो टू मेंटेन या टू मेंटेन दैट ड्यूरेबिलिटी हमें क्या करना होगा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू यूज गुड कंस्ट्रक्शन मटेरियल्स बिकॉज वी इफ वी स्टार्ट ऑफ ऑन अ रॉन्ग फुट इफ वी यूज पोअर क्वालिटी मटीरियल्स दैन द बिल्डिंग विल बी never at its best it will never be strong as strong as, as it should be so the basic materials should be of good quality and it should be constructed in the best way possible to make sure it's durable then uh, how well it is maintained anything be it as small as a an eraser if if it's not kept if it's not maintained uh, it will stop uh, working properly you know if uh, an eraser is not kept well it it's dirty and it's uh, filthy and there's you know uh, black grease of the pencil on it and it then it won't erase properly it will just make the space more black so everything including a building should be maintained well so that it it stays durable if there's any cracks any any dip, any faults in the building they should be fixed in, as soon as possible and you know you should paint your um, paint the building every a uh, few years so um, we have to make sure that it is well maintained then exposure to weathering which is determined by climate environment site aspect and the height of the building so for example a building on sea side you know a building close to the ocean will experience more erosion due to uh, salt laden air and wind so it will deteriorate the outer surface of the walls will uh, deteriorate much faster as compared to a house um, in a land locked city uh, so the environment and site affect how much uh, weathering uh, the building will have to face how much damage due to external factors like climate and uh, um, context etc it will have to face um, then height of the building plays a very important role um a very you know a high rise building will have to withstand uh high wind pressure and uh, it will be more prone to uh, be affected by earthquakes so and as compared to a mid rise building the wind won't affect it as much you know but those are uh, really tall skyscrapers there has to be they have to be designed so that high velocity winds won't uh, damage the building won't uh, you know destroy the building won't destroy the uh, skyscraper then uh, effect of frost action on exposed building materials frost action uh, is basically in extremely cold environments there <clears throat> when temperatures drops uh, way too low uh, that the building materials start getting affected uh, the water starts crystallizing within the pores like you know concrete has pores and if there is the temperature temperature drops too low if you remember we talked about this um mm, see in cold weather what happens is moisture can seep into the porous building materials and when it is it becomes below freezing point then it crystallizes it solidifies which obviously makes the building um, um 
it uh, damages the building the structure of the building then uh, groundwater movement and crystallization of salts in groundwater can cause the foundation to be damaged and foundation damage can ultimately cause collapse of the building so then surface erosion by rainwater a, a a building that is close to the river and uh, close to the river will uh, have uh, have to face you know higher water levels so before uh, you start constructing you always ha always have to make sure to check the groundwater level because if it is too close to to the foundation then um, um, the building may sink inside the ground and obviously the the, the ground water will erode the uh, foundation also if it doesn't settle then just like wind uh, and uh, salt sea breeze and uh, winds close to the sea cause erosion to the surface the wall surfaces in a similar way rain water and high speed rain high velocity rain can also cause damage to the surface and ultimately there can be dampness in the walls and the ceiling if the water is not drained off well and if we don't provide enough watersheds and chachals to prevent rain water from affecting or getting into the walls then uh, sunlight fades paints and plastics and uh, glass becomes you, you know uh, over time Uh, paints fade that is a very obvious thing plastics get faded they get deformed or deformed over time glass because of the expansion and contraction it can get weaker and get prone to breaking over time over a few years then uh, asphalt cracks because of expansion and contraction and uh, rubber obviously it loses its elasticity over time it becomes brittle and it might you know just crumble any doubt no ma'am Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we have so far discussed most of the problems most of the things that affect durability of the, of a building that decrease the durability of a building so what can we do to prevent that from happening how can we fix these problems uh so first of all we can like i said we can provide eaves eaves uh are uh, you know uh, those sloping roofs they have these ends the end edges of uh, the sloping roofs are called eaves and uh, they pro protect the underside of the sloping roof uh, if the eaves are not provided then the water will you know uh, uh, have you ever noticed that when it rains water droplets form on the underside of the um uh, chajja or you know the beam drop and if it stays that way then it will cause uh, water damage to that part of the uh, 
beam or slab similarly in the sloping roofs uh, water if it stays um, forms droplets uh, underneath the sloping roof it will cause water damage so it's better to provide projections like eaves copings sun shades which are basically chhajja and uh, furnaces furnaces are uh, provided on corners see in this diagram you can see uh, that this is the coping see this is the section a cross section of a typical wall this is the foundation this is the wall then there is a door frame then there is a chhajja st string course then the sill window and uh, the slabs so a cornice is basically what we provide so that uh, water doesn't stay on the wall and in the corners so that it won't get uh, seep inside the wall and cause uh, dampness then coping is provided on top of parapet walls so that again see it's sloping so the water will slide down it won't stay in the wall it won't seep down into the wall and then uh, these things should be provided to prevent from rainfall sunlight moisture and other exposures of weather proper care should be taken in designing a building and in maintenance of a building in choice of materials and in protection of a building against weather impact so basically the moment you choose what building materials you're going to use how you're going to design it and how you're going to build it and protect it against external factors that affects the durability if you do that well then your building be, will be more durable the next point to consider uh is fire protection to protect the building against fire comp composite composite and non combustible materials should be used in the construction of walls columns and beams etc so basically you, we should use materials that are not combustible that don't catch fire easily uh, that is the first step of protection against fire uh, for example a brick and rcc construction will be more um safe from fire as compared to a wooden construction then also standards of fire safety or fire extinguishers as specified in the building code should be provided with sufficient and quick fire exit means uh it, see the, all buildings all constructions follow a building code which provides rules and regulations and bylaws to uh, construct a building uh, according to the laws of the city or the state or the country and in those laws there are also rules uh, regarding fire safety so those rules should be followed and uh, fire extinguishers as per the code should be provided around the building and there should be enough and proper fire exits uh, provided and the chances of fire can be reduced through adequate planning of buildings in horizontal and vertical directions 
meaning uh, a building that is too tall and too wide you know how well the spaces and the area is divided in a building also affects uh, how uh, easily it it can catch fire it the how easily the fire can spread through the building a very narrow meaning a small uh, building that is spread over a very small area but is very has a lot of floors in that uh, the chances of fire spreading through the staircases is very high as opposed to a building that is spread over a good amount of floor area uh, the fire uh, maybe one corner or maybe one end of the building will catch fire but the rest will be uh, safe and people can easily evacuate then comes economy economy means at every stage of functional planning designing and construction maintenance or operation of building economic uh, aspect should be considered simultaneously mean how costly it is going to be to design a building to construct it to maintain it over the course of the building and to operate it the whole process and every part of the life cycle of a building should be considered when it comes to how much it will cost and is it feasible or is it not so for example if the maintenance cost is uh, over the course of 5 years is far more than the total cost of construction then the building the construction needs to be the design needs to be corrected uh, this can happen in a case where for example the building is made out in, entirely out of bamboo now to to maintain bamboo is a uh, you you're going to need a lot of maintenance because uh, it is not as strong or uh, you know uh, protective against ex environmental causes maybe humidity and rainfall will damage it over time so you'll have to keep replacing it keep maintaining it over and over again so the maybe the ultimate cost of maintaining it will exceed the amount of cost that it took to build that structure so that is not a very good design then a building should be functionally and structurally sound meaning we already know this but we are talking about this in economy because uh we shouldn't compromise on the structure and the functionality of a building just to cut costs just to make the construction a little cheaper uh we shouldn't compromise with structure or functionality which a lot of people do you know those bad constructions you must have seen it in news that uh, you know a bridge a flyover was being constructed it fell down um a corridor fell down in poor people why does that happen because they try to cut costs in the wrong places they try to cut costs with building materials maybe the quality of construction and then it collapses so you you shouldn't uh, prioritize cost construction cost over uh, functionality and the structural stability of the building or even the Uh, safety of the occupant maybe they uh, avoid putting fire extinguishers or maybe maintaining or replacing them uh, uh, after they they've expired just so that they won't have to spend some money on it and then when there's a fire it uh, causes a lot of damage to the building and obviously to the occupant so there's no point of a saving cost if the building collapses or if it um, uh ultimately hurts the people who are occupying the building so uh, uh considering all of that the cost should not exceed um you know the average cost of construction it shouldn't cost 
way too much it shouldn't cost way too little it should be just right then thermal insulation thermal insulation means uh, protection against the heat transfer in the building this works in both cases for example in a cold climate we would want that the warmth and heat of the heater or the radiator stays inside the building and it doesn't seep outside so we want to insulate the building for that and in warmer climates we don't want the external heat or exterior heat to come inside the building so we insulate for that so for a thermal insulation exterior walls should be thicker so that the building can be strong obviously but it also provides insulation we can make cavity walls uh the external walls can have cavities you know they can be hollow inside or maybe they can be constructed with hollow bricks so that uh there's a uh, air gaps or vacuum inside the walls which provides the extreme excellent um insulation in the construction of walls roofs floors etc um all the air gaps or pores in the construction material should be filled there shouldn't be any uh, hollow gaps or um, air spaces within the construction material uh, and all those spaces can be filled with uh, slag wool or uh, maybe lightweight concrete or uh, any insulating material like uh, glass wool or anything that uh, provides insulation so that will add an extra layer um, of insulation to the building envelope building envelope basically means the envelope that makes the outside of the building which includes walls and roof um, then the building should be provided with chhajjas canopy weather sheds veranda courtyards trees garden etc to achieve heat insulation so to protect against heat we can make uh, chhajjas so that the sun uh, uh, doesn't hit directly the uh, you know um, it doesn't we don't get uh, sunlight directly inside the building or maybe the walls don't get as hot so it will protect any heat transfer through conduction then verandas and courtyards uh provide a buffer a buffer between the heat and the interior of the um, of the space and gardens and trees obviously provide shade and also acts as buffer uh, and so that also helps in insulating the building top terrace of the building should be insulated against heat economically by using special flooring method so like we talked about cavity in walls we could create a cavity in it and fill it with the wool or maybe you know in in old indian vernacular architecture what they used to do was they used to use hollow empty earthen pots matkas and line the whole roof with it and uske upar they used to fill mud so that also provided air cavities and that act, acted as an insulation material and it has been seen that using that method uh, we can reduce the internal temperature of a space by at least 2 to 3 degrees which is a lot then light in every building if then every building possession number and sizes of doors and windows should be in such a way that sufficient daylight free from glare 
comes from the right direction meaning we should get enough daylight in without getting a lot of sunlight or glare we should get good amount of daylight inside the building so that we don't have to turn on light during the day time then the designer should also keep in mind the lighting requirements with heat insulation of the building right so we cannot provide then uh, with light if we provide enough light uh, through windows and doors we should keep in mind that we uh, don't provide so many weather sheds and so deep weather sheds that daylight isn't enough daylight doesn't come into the space so then free passage of clean air in a building is also important um because if the room is properly ventilated there will be enough oxygen in the air passing through the building and the more oxygen there is the healthier you, people will feel the ventilation is required to control dust and other impurities uh, in the air and which is the main cause of insisting proper ventilation in the in industrial buildings so in industrial buildings or in factories where there is you know a lot of chemicals and a lot of pollutant dust is produced they need to be properly ventilated so that that dust and fumes and chemicals can be uh, filtered out of the building and it is also required to suppress odors smoke constant you know when there's a, you know some some bad odor in the house so what people do what the first thing they they do is they open the doors and windows so that air can pass through and the bad smell can uh, leave the interior space so ventilation the free passage of air is also required to reduce odors smoke and concentration of bacteria and if there is enough uh, you know ventilation uh, condensation won't happen so you know when you have an ac on when you turn on the ac and all the windows and everything is shut uh, condensation forms on the outside of the uh, glass that can be avoided if uh, there's pr proper ventilation and obviously you know those rooms conference rooms and offices where there's no windows and there's no fresh air coming in you feel suffocated and that can be avoided if you know there's they open up the window there's proper ventilation and everything then uh, we talked about this in the weather and all the effects of weather uh moisture should you know we should try to prevent moisture from getting into uh getting into the walls and the outer envelope of a building uh because a, one of the basic requirements in case of all buildings is that structure should remain dry as far as possible because presence of moisture in any building deteriorates the strength of materials so the building materials will start to become less and less stable and less strong so that ultimately re results in 
that ultimately results in deterioration of the building itself. Then, uh, to prevent dampness from, from getting into the building, a damp proof courses are provided when uh, it is being constructed. Uh, <clears throat> then, at various levels of entry of dampness into a building, you know? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, so through the roof, mostly um, dampness enters the building through the roof because rain falls um, and if, the, if there's not proper drainage on the roof for the uh, surface runoff and the rainwater to drain, uh, then it will accumulate and it will start getting into the building. Uh, so all the buildings nowadays have damp roofing treatment done during construction. So uh, damp roofing is done on the walls, on the roof, and even in the basement, because the most common areas where the dampness comes due to external factors is the roof, the basement, and the walls. And then due to internal leakage, it may occur in various wet areas of the house, like the kitchen, the bathroom, balconies. Then moisture in building is normally due to faulty construction, poor materials, and workmanship. So if if the building is constructed properly, the good quality materials are used and damp proofing courses are done, there should be no way that dampness can get into the structure. So moisture gets in the building due to water penetration through the water, the outer envelope of a building. Then, for safety of the buildings, external walls should be strong enough. And also, window openings should be protected with grills or concrete jali. So, for security in a building, uh, what are the we have to identify what are the points of access in a building? Meaning, kahan kahan se koi andar aa sakta hai, uh, which includes the door, obviously the window. Uh, the fences or any weak points. We have to assess that and then we have to provide adequate measures to prevent any break-in. And, and in important buildings where security is high, uh, automatic alarm systems are also provided. Now, homes, residences also have automatic alarm systems. Then, sound insulation is important because there's uh, most of the settlements now are in urban areas, and there is so much noise pollution in the cities from the traffic and uh, from all of the um, activities that go on in the city that it is important to provide enough sound insulation so that the uh, occupants living in that building are not disturbed, are not, uh, you know, well, the first thing we discussed was comfort and convenience. And if there is too much noise pollution inside the house, then the people will neither be comfortable and nor be at, you know, convenient. So, again, the most of the measures that we take for thermal insulation also work for sound insulation like cavity walls, airtight windows, thick external walls, hollow floors, uh, then the inner walls should 
also have uh, some form of sound absorption materials like fiber boards or something uh, so that uh, sound doesn't transmit easily between uh, internal walls from between different rooms in a house or maybe a building in building for example in a classroom in a in a school you wouldn't want that uh, the sound of uh, teacher teaching in one class should uh, disturb the students in the other class the internal walls should also be insulated then again uh, there are some standards some bylaws laid out for buildings to follow so that uh, it the planning and design can be done to prevent any noise to Uh, create a problem, whether it was noise or indoor or outdoor, and those laws should be followed. Then strength of stability is mostly dependent on di uh, dimensional stability. If the building is strong, if uh, the building is designed for all the possible uh, stresses that will occur on it, like the load, the self load, the dead load, load of the furniture, and all of that. then uh, it will be strong enough the materials should be of uh, adequate strength and grade so that they are appropriate for the amount of load that the building is going to take then finally lastly termite control termite control is very important because they're not only a uh, cause of problem for the structural safety of a building um but they also attack uh, the things and uh, food items and things like clothes textile woodwork paper vegetable plastics and even wiring inside a house once termite if there is termite infestation inside the house you can rest assured that every single piece of object thing furniture clothes anything in the house can be attacked by termite it's not just uh, confined to wood people have this misconception ki termites only attack wood products but that's not true they uh, get into the if they get into your clothes they will bore holes in the clothes plastic paper anything they find so uh it is best to adopt termite control measures before construction is complete during construction there should be like we do damp proofing in a similar way we should do termite proofing and if you have termite infestation after the building is already constructed and people are living there then what they can do is you can bore holes around the building and uh, you can uh, treat it with chemicals and then fix the and uh, you should also put termite proofing chemicals in the holes or in the damaged parts of the house and then fill them and fix them uh, so post termite proofing you know post construction termite proofing is a little costly and very complicated and should be done by experts so this was uh, these were all the requirements uh, of design and construction for any building be it institutional industrial commercial residential these things points should always be kept in mind